Hi, my name is Dr. Carl Spencer Lashley. I was born on June 7, 1890 in Davis, West Virginia. I'm a jack of all trades in psychology as a behaviorist, a zoologist, and a neuropsychologist. Today, I would like to show you what I have learned after years of searching for the locus of control by showing you a quick demonstration. Follow me to my office. Before we begin, I would like to share with you what brought me here today. First, I would like to make a shout out to the woman who helped me get to where I am today. She pushed me into primary school at the age of four and encouraged me to pursue my passions on higher education. Hi mom, thank you so much. Thanks to her, I graduated from Davis High School by 14 and began my college career at 15. As a child, I always loved playing outdoors and collecting little critters. I loved exploring their anatomy and behavior, as you can see here in my extensive bug collection. My passion for this, along with the honor of taking the zoology course taught by the great John Johnston at the University of West Virginia, motivated me to pursue a career in that field. As I continued my schooling at the University of Pittsburgh, I had the pleasure of working alongside wonderful minds such as psychologist Adolf Meyer, Carl Dahlenbach, and the great John Watson, which brought me where I am today as a neuropsychologist. Although much of my expertise is in animal behavior working in labs with Watson, my life's work has been dedicated to finding the one point that encompasses all learning and memory. Dr. Lashley, Dr. Lashley! Ah, here is my student Donald Hepp falling through with my work. The rats, they completed the maze again! Oh, rats, not again. All right, I'll be there in a minute. Well, 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 look who it is, my old pal John Watson. How's that crying little baby doing? Still afraid of little bunnies? It's nice to see you, Carl. Still have that sense of humor, I see. Seems like you've taken your work with the rats to a new level, though. Yes, my work here is a little different than what we did about 20 years ago. People do grow up and move on, you know. Remember when we used to get the rats fucked up and see how terrible their navigation skills were in the lab? <laughs> oh, and those field trips we would take to watch the nesting behavior of those wacky turns. Oh, good times, buddy. Good times. But I move on to other things now. It's been some time since we have last worked together at Johns Hopkins. I had just graduated with my PhD in genetics. Oh, what a rookie I was. It's nice to see you've continued your work. I better get going now. I have a date. <coughs> I mean, a meeting with Rosalie. But nice seeing you. Let's keep in touch. Yes, let's have fun at that meeting. Well, that was a nice surprise. Hmm, where were we? Ah, uh, yeah. I was telling you about my latest work in the search of the engram. Let's head into my lab and see what Donald was up to. Our case area. Fail. Hi, Dr. Lashley. Are you ready to see the rats now? Yes, I am, Donnie boy. Why should the judges be working on? Gee, Doc, I'd be honored. You see, Dr. Lashley has been trying to figure out how we learn and where our memories come from. You see, his theory is that it all stems from this one tiny little spot, this engram he's been raving about. But I'm starting to think it won't be so. Shh. Here, let me show you what. You see, what we've been doing with these little rats is teaching them how to run a maze and then cutting out parts of their brain to see if they forget. Here we have rat 6030. He just learned how to get through the maze successfully. We're going to perform some ablations by cutting out part of the cerebral cortex, that's the wrinkly part, to see if that's the center of where he holds memories. If he fails to complete the maze, it would suggest that we found part of the engram. I just don't get why these rats would keep remembering. I guess that means we can eliminate Wernicke's area as a locus of memory. We just can't seem to pin this down. About that, Doctor, I've been meaning to ask you. So, all these experiments you've been running, it's pretty safe to say that the memory is not just in one little part, but rather the entire cortex working as a whole. Does that mean you've switched to the Gestalt side now? <laughs> I suppose I have. I'm starting to believe that memory cannot be reduced to conditional reflexes. 
It may be just something greater than that, a complex interaction, so to speak. So yes, Donny boy, although that Watson fellow had me thinking like a behaviorist, I suppose it's safe to say I'm a gestaltist now. <laughs> Thanks for your explanation of that. You're a very intelligent young man. I'd be very interested to see you follow in my, in my footsteps. Thanks, Doc. As a council member and president of the American Psychological Association and a member of the board of directors of the Yerkes Laboratories in Florida and a breakthrough researcher in this whole engram thing, I feel that I am a deserving candidate to compete on this season's Psychology Without Talent. I hope to hear back from you soon. Thanks for watching. Hi judges, Donald Hebb here. I just wanted to let you guys know that not choosing Dr. Lashley was going to be a huge mistake. I know his research might seem kind of silly now, but I promise you in the future, he's going to be a pretty big deal. What you guys don't know yet is that his work is going to influence future psychologists and even contribute to a whole new school of psychology. Another one of his students, Carl Perbram, he's going to continue Lashley's engram work, and then he's going to cross paths with this guy named George Miller, who's going to eventually concoct to the idea of cognitive psychology. Think about that, Judge Miller. And then he's going to go on to influence even more gestalt believers. Everything in the future about learning and memory will stem from Lashley's engram experiments. Oh shoot, I gotta go!